Welcome to Delta Days in the Bronx. It's Friday, June 4th, and today we're going to hear from Nicole Yearwood of Educated Voter regarding redistricting. What is redistricting? Well, this is how our city council people, our assembly people, and others gain their political power. Sit back and listen to how redistricting can affect who your representative will be. Today, we are gonna discuss redistricting and we have our in-house expert, Ms. Nicole Yearwood, who is a senior partnership specialist in the New York region of the US Census and a consultant for Rank the Vote NYC. Since November of 2018, Nicole has worked to inform communities about plans for the 2020 decennial census and create partnerships with stakeholders to help spread the message. Currently, she is informing communities about the surveys and resources the Census Bureau offers during the nine years between the decennial censuses. As a consultant for Rank the Vote NYC, she conducts presentations to community groups about the new voting system that will be used in local primary and special elections in New York City. She is a Harlem native and has been involved in government, politics, and community affairs professionally since 2000, when she began working for then Manhattan Borough President, C. Virginia Fields. She has volunteered and worked on several city, state, and national political campaigns. In 2004, Nicole was elected and served as a delegate to the Democratic National Convention. Subsequently, she worked in Philadelphia for the John Kerry presidential campaign. For almost nine years, she was director of government relations for a nonprofit that provides free programs in New York City parks. During her tenure, she conducted workshops that taught community groups how to build relationships with elected officials and secured more than $6 million in capital and discretionary funding from elected officials on the city, state, and federal level. Nicole has always been civic-minded, but in 2014, she noticed a gap in knowledge around voting and civic engagement among her networks, and in 2015, founded EducatedVoter.net. Using various social media platforms, she shares a nonpartisan voter education and civic engagement information with the goal of increasing civic participation. Sori Yearwood is also a part of our National Social Action Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Ms. Mrs. Nicole Yearwood. So hello, and um, thank you so much, Teresa, for that introduction. Um, I should have told you to cut it short, you know, when you hear your own bio, it's, you know, you say I did all that and I'm only 25. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, good okay. evening. <laughs> <laughs> to, you know, so let's get down to the matter at hand. Um, thank you so much to the Bronx alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated for inviting me to speak about redistricting, but also your social action work in general. I've been observing and also sharing um, all of the uh, candidates forums you've hosted recently. And those events were very important. There were two special elections in the Bronx. So you all are doing the social action work on the ground, keeping your communities informed. So I'm glad to be here to be able to talk a little bit about redistricting and how it's going to impact Bronxites for the next 10 years. <clears throat> so as um, Sora Landladder introduced me and talked about the fact that I work for the Census Bureau, let me get to why I actually decided to engage in that work. And it really is because of the census's relationship to our congressional representation and its direct 
connection to how each of us obtains our elected officials. Now, what exactly does that mean? So on the screen here, I'm going directly to the census website and I pulled the congressional representation map that was just put up even after we've had the conversation about discussing redistricting. Since then, the state totals have been released to the public. They were given to the president. I believe it was April 26th and this map was posted. So now we can see that as a result, of the 2020 census, it, sees, it says here, right in black and white, congressional representation based on the 2020 census. So now New York State is going to have 26 representatives. We lost one seat as a result of the 2020 census. And the population per representative is 777,529 people, probably give or take a few. And so if you look at this map, Again, on the census.gov website, you can look at a decennial year. You see the decennial year is listed here. You can click on them and you can view the congressional representation based on census data. And so this is why I even got involved in the census in the first place. I saw the population estimates that were discussed starting in 2017, stating that New York would lose at least one congressional seat. And that's our representation in our federal government. We've lost actually two congressional seats since the 1950 census. So at one point in 1940, we had 43 congressional members in the House of Representatives. And today we have 27 after redistricting is complete we will then have 26. The other thing that is tied to the census data um, and redistricting is the number of electors we have in the electoral college. So now we will have 26 plus two are two senators, which will give us 28 electors in the electoral college after redistricting is complete. And so this is how this representation is connected directly to the census, the whole redistricting process. What will happen is by the end of September, the, uh, the state government will receive the actual local count. So what was released on April 26th was just the state population totals. So now we know how many representatives we will receive, but on the state level, that is where the actual redistricting process will take place once we receive, once New York State receives the breakdown on the local level and county level and city level and census tract level data, that will be released by September 30th. So that's first things first. Now, I've already talked about how redistricting is connected directly to the census and our congressional representation. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of other maps because this is actually connected not just to our members of Congress, but also to our state assembly, our state Senate, and even our city council districts. All of our legislative district representatives are directly tied to the census data and to the redistricting process because redistricting basically refers to how the lines are drawn after the decennial census. And so now, I've gone to some information I just obtained again, right from our city planning website here. We see our Bronx city council districts and how they overlap with our local community boards. So just showing you all of these lines, this is what redistricting is. It is the drawing of our electoral district lines. And so you see here the lines, this is our council, these are the council districts. And then you see CD, CD5, that's the community districts or community boards, most often called. And so you see Council District 8, 17, 18, 13, how 13 is drawn, part here, part Pelham Bay, the island here, um, City Council District 12, 15, 14, and 16. And now this is the overlap of the community boards with the um, New York State Assembly districts overlaid. And so again, these lines are drawn. So you might've wondered, well, how come 
you know, your Congress member's number based on the 2010 census, it might have been counts, it might have been congressional district number 15, and then it changed to number 13. And that's as a result of the redistricting process. Maybe, for instance, you were in one assembly district and then all of a sudden you were in another. That is based on the redistricting process. So again, just looking at how these lines are drawn, this is based on population, based on census data. And here are the state Senate districts. And so you can see, again, the lines, they're all squiggly. There's, you know, it's not just an even shape. It's not a circle. It's not a square. It's not a triangle. These are carefully drawn lines. And these lines in New York State will be redrawn by an independent redistricting commission. Now, it's not the same across the country, but New York State does have an independent redistricting commission, and they will submit maps. But the great thing about this process is actually, as an individual, they will have public hearings. The public can also submit maps and give suggestions. Now, why would you do something like that? So let me tell you why you might do something like that. If you see how these lines are drawn, these districts are drawn, if you are Bronxite and you are familiar with these communities, you can actually take a look and see why would it be in your interest? Maybe sometimes these council district lines or state assembly lines or state senate district lines are not necessarily keeping natural communities together. You know, for instance, if you are in a development and one part of the development is in one district and another part of the development, the same development is in another district. So it's very important that local communities, you know, on some level that some representative is, is watching the process, gets involved with the process, so that you can make sure that communities of interest, that's the, that's the technical term, communities of interest are kept together so that then they can move together, you know, politically, make sure that their interests are met, they can elect someone to represent them because they have similar interests. And that's really the goal with the redistricting process, a fair redistricting process is to keep communities of interest together. Now we have, for instance, we look at the congressional district lines. Let's go next. So this is the Bronx U.S. Congressional District over the community board district lines. And as you can see here, I referred to the 15th congressional district. We have the 14th congressional district. Now here you have a part of the 13th, but the other piece of the 13th congressional district is actually in upper Manhattan and part of central Harlem as well as part of the 14th Congressional District, some of that goes from the Bronx and has a piece of Queens, which is not uncommon. Some of the 16th Congressional District, while it has a lot of the Bronx, there's also a part of Westchester that is included in that district, not shown on this map because this is of the Bronx only, but this is how these lines are drawn, again, to connect communities of interest to keep them together. But as you can see, the lines are squiggly. There's no clear, you know, there's no square triangle. There are no clean lines in the redistricting process. And part of that, again, is to keep these communities together and making sure they're together. And if your community was split, I've talked to a friend of mine who lives in Brooklyn. And she said, she's talking to me about, you know, voting and civics and participation. And she mentioned that she felt like part of her community was separated into too many assembly districts. And so again, they're not kept together so that they can have their interests met by the one representative. They would have to go to two or three representatives to have their interests addressed or concerns addressed instead of all coming together again, communities of interest coming together and being able to have one person represent their needs and concerns instead of having to go to three, the same community go to three separate elected officials. Now, last but not least, and I'm gonna stop sharing, let's talk about how you can get involved in the process. Now I touched on it, you know, momentarily, and you might say, listen, I'm just the average citizen, you know, what can I do? 
So there are several, they're usually community-based organizations. You know, I'm hoping that Bronx Alumni Chapter is one of them that is monitoring the redistricting process, perhaps sharing the information on the hearings. Or again, there's always that community leader. There's always someone in the community that's keeping the fin their finger on the pulse of these types of issues. So I always say, keep your ear out. Maybe you can't pay attention to what's going on with the redistricting process all the time. You know, you can't attend the hearing, but just always make sure you keep your ear to the ground. If you receive an email, you know, from Bronx Alumni Chapter with this information saying, you know, this independent commission is having a hearing, you know, voice your opinion. There's also going to be software available so that people can then perhaps suggest and draw their own maps. I was at another forum um, and, and someone was on the panel who's actually a member of the Independent Redistricting Commission of New York State. And he said, you don't even have to have sophisticated software. If you can come in and submit testimony and even just draw a map with a regular map and a pencil to show how your community could, should be kept together or how you think a map should be drawn for a particular legislative district that you can even submit that. So I would say, look out for those hearings, listen out for those community groups who you may know of drawing maps and simply Google map drawing software, redistricting software. There are plenty of resources that I will share with, um, with Teresa, with Sora Land Ladder that she will have at her disposal so that when the community is ready, Bronx Alumni Chapter will be fully appeared, prepared to assist them and provide them with the resources. But there are plenty of free resources out there for the average citizen to engage in a redistricting process that is going to impact them for the next 10 years. And again, circling back and you know bringing it full circle back to the census and my involvement, redistricting impacts our community for 10 years years. So it's so important. If you didn't do the census in 2020, you will have a chance to do it in 2030. And just remember, this is how we obtain our political and electoral district lines for 10 years. I didn't even mention the money part, because today we're talking about redistricting, but this process happens every 10 years. And when these lines are drawn, these will be the representatives that we have for 10 years until the next census. Wow, thank you for that, Sora and Nikki. So um, 10 years is a long time um, for us to think about having um, certain elected officials, to think about us being a community together and to think about how our community will grow and change over those 10 years. So it's important for everyone to get involved in this process. So I wanna thank you this evening for such an informative talk about redistricting. And I hope that all Bronx sites will look out for information. And if you can get involved, please get involved. Thank you. Mm -hmm.